Hi everyone. Welcome to PSC Collegiate English. Today, let us look at the simplified explanation, the shortest possible explanation of Paradise Lost Book 9. Paradise Lost is an epic that is, sub, uh, that is prescribed in almost all the syllabuses of almost many uh, universities throughout India. Questions are frequently asked from Paradise Lost Book 9 in almost all the competitive exams. Therefore, it becomes quintessential part of English language and literature. From this point of view, today let us look at the simplified explanation. This might be the shortest version of the epic that you might have come across. So, without any further ado, let's quickly get into the explanation. Before proceeding into Paradise Lost, let us look at what an epic is. An epic poem is a lengthy narrative poem involving a time beyond living memory in which occurred extraordinary doings of extraordinary men dealing with gods or other superhuman forces. Now that was the definition of epics. Epic uh, has certain characteristics which it should follow only then the poem comes under the epic category. So what are those 10 characteristics? Let's quickly look at it. It should begin in media res. That means the story should begin from the middle. That means there should be an uh, introduction and also a conclusion that would come later in the epic. But it should begin in the media res. That means in the middle. Second point is setting is vast covering nations and universe. If you take whichever F epic, uh, it, it will cover lots of nations, sometimes universe, sometimes gods or as well. The third point is, it should uh, there should be an invocation to Muse. Muse is the go goddess of poetry. So, the poet must humbly pray to uh, Muse, make an invocation to Muse to give him the strength to write this epic. So, that is the third point. Third characteristic of epic poem. Coming to the fourth, it should begin with statement of the theme. We all know in Paradise Lost, there is a theme that is to justify the ways of God to man. That is the theme of Paradise Lost. With this purpose, Milton wrote this epic. Coming to the fifth characteristics, it should uh, include use of epithets. Epithets is repetition of stock phrases. So frequently that should come, uh, you know, to uh, again and again remember, uh, I mean, uh, to uh, explain the motive of the epic. Then there should be epic catalog. Seventh point is there should be long and formal speeches. Eighth characteristic is there should be divine intervention in human affairs. Uh, if you take uh, uh, Iliad and Odyssey, uh, gods are coming uh, in the war field. Similarly, uh, here uh, in Paradise Lost, we have archangels like Raphael and uh, Gabriel speaking to Adam. So there should be a divine intervention in human affairs. The ninth feature is heroes should embody the value of civilization. And the tenth characteristic is uh, often features heroes tragic descent into the underworld. So in uh, Paradise Lost, here fall of man is depicted. In Iliad and Odyssey, uh, we know uh, Odysseus goes to underworld and uh, so many heroes. So that is also a feature of epic poetry. Coming to the next character that is hero. Hero is the one who participates in cyclical journey or a quest. He faces adversaries and returns home transformed by his journey. Hero performs deeds and exemplifies morals. There are also some epic conventions. Only if uh, a poetry follows the epic conventions, it can be called an epic. So first one is proposition. Proposition means stating theme or cause of the epic. As I said earlier, the uh, proposition or the theme of Paradise Lost is to justify the ways of God to men. Second, there should be invocation. That is, poet invokes Muse. Muse is one of the nine daughters of Zeus. Third is, uh, it should begin in the middle, in media res, in the middle of things. The fourth one is, uh, there should be a numeratio, that means catalogues and genealogies are given. The fifth point is, it should have epithet, that is the repetition of stock phrases. 
Now coming to the short summary of book 9. Book 9 is so very important because it is prescribed in so many universities. Also many times many questions are asked from uh, book 9 be it uh, UGC net or uh, be it uh, state level exams. Book 9 of Paradise Lost uh, some one, one or two questions are definitely asked. So let us quickly look at it. Milton places his epic within the tradition of tragedy. It involves the fall of great men through some special flaw. Milton reaffirms uh, his ability and uh, speaks with Christian humility, mentioning his old age and asking the Holy Spirit to finish the poem through him. We all know that Milton the poet was very pious and uh, he uh, through Holy Spirit uh, now, uh, please remember one thing, each and every point that I have mentioned in these notes are mentioned in the epic. So, I have taken special care to uh, not to leave out any major arguments that is happening in the book. Only then, uh, I could do justice to this explanation. That is why uh, you might feel there might be uh, repetitions or something. That is because uh, I am so very particular that not to leave any important point. Coming to Adam and Eve's disobedience and the fall of man. That is the content of book 9. To be to tell you in one sentence, this is it. Adam and Eve's disobedience and the fall of man. That is the theme of uh, Paradise Lost book 9. Milton asks Muse to keep him from being distracted by vain descriptions of long and tedious havoc as caused by Homer and Virgil in their uh, Iliad and Odyssey. Uh, the scene turns to Satan. So, in the very beginning of uh, book 9, Satan, the first scene opens with Satan who has been hiding in the dark side of the earth for 7 days after being banished by Gabriel. Gabriel is one of the archangels. On the 8th day, Satan returns to Eden disguised as a mist following the Tigris river and rising up in the fountain next to the tree of life. For uh, people who are uh, preparing for objective type uh, questions, uh, exams, uh, please note the river mentioned here is Tigris river. For 7 days, uh, Satan uh, was hiding and on the 8th day, he emerges uh, into heaven in the form of mist near Tigris river, near uh, the tree of life. Please remember, please note. Now, let us look at Satan's plan. After coming there, after uh, being in uh, paradise, you know, uh, he remembers, he was also an angel, he is a fallen angel, right? So, he remembers his past life, he thinks of the beautiful things uh, which are there in heaven, he thinks of how difficult or tor torturous hell is and he contemplates for some, some time and then later on plans uh, to what to proceed next. Satan studies all the creatures of Eden and finally settles on a snake for its wit and native subtlety. Before continuing with his plan, Satan hesitates, grieving what might have been. That is, he is thinking about his past life. He decides that earth was more beautiful than heaven. Adam and Eve's happiness cause him greater anguish. Satan reaffirms his purpose to bring evil out of God's creation. Because he wants, uh, uh, I mean, Satan wants to, uh, you know, uh, cause pain to God by uh, harming his creation. That is Adam and Eve. Satan laments how far he has fallen from the position of archangel to the macy falls and bestial slime of the serpent. He poses like a sleeping snake which is curled up upon uh, the itself like a labyrinth. Th this particular snake is very huge and it is just coiled over uh, its own uh, body. It's like a labyrinth. So, Satan has chosen this particular snake uh, for his plan, for his purpose of, you know, of uh, convincing Eve to uh, have the fruit. Coming to the next point. So, one section of uh, book one is over. That is, uh, Satan is there. Uh, he is planning and he has uh, got into the body of a serpent. Now coming to the second part, Eve's idea of working separately. The next morning, the next scene is shown. The next morning, Adam and Eve wake up and do their usual praise to God and do their usual course. Uh, Eve proposes that she and Adam work separately to get more work done. 
but adam adam does not approve of that he worries that the two might be more susceptible to satan if they are separated and in times of danger a woman's place is with her husband this is milton's comment now eve responds that she had overheard raphael's warning and she knows and she persuades adam uh, to that they work separately adam tries to dissuade her because he is wiser than her eve says that they will have double honor if they defend themselves uh, against uh, satan adam reminds her of her free will and eve replies that the proud satan will seek adam first now in in her confidence eve says that even if satan is coming he might seek adam first not the weaker eve she parts adam and asks uh, and adam uh, asks her to be back by noon here milton comments that they will never have a sweet repast in paradise again now this is what uh, milton comments as the observer okay and now the section 2 is also over coming to the third part you, you see if you have noticed book 9 is really simple but then uh, we must uh, because it is an epic uh, we must follow the storyline very properly only then you can uh, attempt the quotations that might be asked from this section so coming to the uh, third uh, part that is satan is convincing eve satan is delighted to find eve alone satan is momentarily stunned by her beauty but is reminded of his hatred on seeing eve Uh, satan uh, for a moment forgets about his plan seeing her beauty seeing her goodness uh, seeing her as a goddess uh, he he forgets about his plan and everything but then he is reminded of all the tortures uh, of hell and once again he uh, tries to revenge then uh, Sa- satan coils himself and seems to stand upright in a surging maze lifting his head to get eve's attention Uh, we already have seen that satan is in the form of a serpent and the serpent is standing up it seems to catch eve's attention serpent calls eve goddess among gods she is amazed that serpent could talk you see here satan is using this uh, praising the technique of praising if somebody praises uh, you know any one of us we would automatically get elated now this is the technique that satan is using for eve Satan explains that he found a tree with beautiful apples and at the fruit uh, he, and he got the ability to uh, talk and expanded intellect he is able to perceive heavenly and earthly knowledge now in this way satan is trying to seduce eve's attention eve asks uh, him uh, where the tree grows satan offers uh, to show her Eve sees the tree of knowledge and says that she has been forbidden by God from eating the fruit. Satan asks uh, about the commandment. Eve reaffirms that she and Adam can eat any fruit except the tree of knowledge. Now what happens? Uh, this talking ser- serpent is telling to Eve to have fruit from the tree of knowledge which God had forbidden Adam and Eve from eating. Satan says that the tree of knowledge has revealed to him that God actually wants Eve, uh, Eve and Adam to disobey him as this will prove her independence and dauntless virtue in braving death. Satan says that he himself has proved that the fruit does not bring death. Now that is what uh, the serpent is saying uh, uh, that serpent has eaten the apple and it has uh, gained wisdom. to have a speech with humans also it it has wisdom to know what is in god's mind and god wants god himself wants uh, these two to disobey him so that they might be rewarded for their you know chivalry now this is what uh, satan is telling eve satan says that god has forbidden the fruit to keep adam and eve low and ignorant instead of assuming their proper places as gods if serpent serpent can achieve speech then eve will surely become a goddess satan suggests that there is no sin in desiring virtue and knowledge now based on this you know uh, this profound speech of uh, satan uh, eve has fallen a victim of satan's speech now coming to the next part that is eve is eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge eve looks at the fruit which seems perfect and delicious 
she thinks that the fruit might be very powerful since the god has forbidden it it seems very wrong that such mag magical fruit is denied to humans if beasts can have it in the evil hour she takes a bite please remember please note this line earth felt the wound and all was lost this is a very famous line from paradise lost book 9 this is frequently asked please note eve praises the tree of knowledge and thinks if she should uh, let adam eat it then resolves to give it to him if she dies he would be wedded to another eve now here eve is uh, portrayed as very selfish once uh, she consumes uh, the fruit uh, she thinks if uh, she alone dies uh, adam might be wedded to some other eve she does not want that she is very selfish that is why she wants to share the apple with adam coming to the next part adam eats the fruit now adam has his own reasons for eating the fruit we are uh, coming to the close of this uh, book 9 uh, book 9 is really uh, i mean very vast po portion i have just you know tried to sum up uh, the main content adam has been weaving a bouquet of flowers to give eve Adam sees the forbidden fruit in her hand and Eve explains that the serpent ate it and learned to speak she had eaten it uh, and her eyes have been opened she says she is like growing up to godhead she wants adam to try equal joy as equal love on seeing this adam is devastated Adam drops the uh, garland he stands there speechless and pale he is horrified that Eve has succumbed to temptation Adam's sin is placing his love for Eve above the love for God. Adam is curious and is attracted to Eve's beauty. Eve is attract distracted by appearance and wants to prove herself. Milton shows that Milton this is the message that Milton is conveying. Milton shows how these flaws lead to full-fledged sins. Now this is what there might be uh, you know in epic tradition there there should be a hamashia a little flaw that leads to greater sin now that is uh, how uh, the heroes become tragic heroes so what happened now the nature's reaction is uh, given after adam and eve uh, ate the fruit what happened nature groans again and sky weeps adam feels invigorated and godlike he is filled with lust they run off to a shady bank to have sex and they sleep after waking up they realize that instead of gaining knowledge of the divine they have gained the knowledge of uh, good lost and evil god the two are suddenly aware the eve eve and adam are suddenly aware of their nakedness and cover themselves with fig leaves they start to weep and emotions of sin come to them they are filled with anger hate mistrust suspicion and discord till uh, till then they were like innocents but after eating the fruit from the tree of uh, knowledge uh, every every sin has come to them every every feeling has come to them and uh, they are, they have literally lost paradise that innocence they have lost let us look at what was milton's message milton's message to the people is that knowledge is important but not all knowledge leads to good when it involves being disobedient and breaking order all knowledge is not good that is what milton is suggesting even in uh, you know accepting knowledge one must be choosy coming to the analysis of uh, book 9 milton's fourth invocation differs from the earlier ones he does not invoke invoke urania initially he invokes in the first three books he uh, invokes uh, urania but in the ninth book in the fourth time inv invocation when he does he uh, does not invoke urania now it is a christian epic with a tragic core coming to adam adam can be described as uh, patient patience and heroic martyrdom that is what uh, is uh, that sort of a hero is adam in the book 9 this particular word is very important felix culpa that means happy fault now adam and eve have committed felix culpa that is a happy fault because later on jesus would be born and jesus would redeem uh, humans from all their sins in order to in order for jesus to uh, you know cleanse the human kind this fault needed to happen that is why it is known as happy fault or felix culpa this comes for the first time in uh, paradise lost book 9 
Satan can be described as incarnate and brute, that to the height of deity aspired. Here, a serpent is also described as prelapsarian serpent, circular base of ring folds that toad fold above fold a surging mace. In that position, that serpent is lying. So that is described. The epic poem is written in blank verse. In the first version, when it was published in 1667, Paradise Lost consisted of 10 books and they were 10,000 verse. In the second edition, which was published in 1674, they were 12 books of Paradise Lost. The epic's purpose is stated in the very first book. Now the characters uh, who are there in uh, book 9 especially are Satan, Adam, Eve, son of God, God the father, Raphael and Michael. The motives mentioned in book 9 are marriage and idolatry. Now let us also look at some of the important quotations that are frequently asked. The first one is, earth felt the wound and nature from her seat sighing uh, through all her works gave signs of woe that was lost. Now this is when Adam and Eve ate the uh, fruit from the tree, uh, no, tree of knowledge. That is when this line comes. Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal taste brought death into the world and all our woe with loss of Eden till one greater man restore us and regain the blissful seat. Sing heavenly muse. This comes in the invocation part. In the very beginning of book 9 where uh, J uh, John Milton is telling us what would happen in the process of the ep epic. Knowledge forbidden, suspicious, reasonless, why should their Lord envy them that? Can it be a sin to know? Can it be death? Now this is what uh, Satan uh, asks to Eve to convince her to eat the fruit. Coming to the fourth quotation, our state cannot be severed. We are one, one flesh to lose thee where to lose myself. This is, uh, this is, uh, this uh, quotation is from the conversation between Adam and Eve. This is what Adam says when Eve says that we can be separated and uh, we could do separate work so that more works would be done. Then Adam says that we are one, we cannot be separated. Coming to the fifth quotation. So glistened the dire snake and into fraud led Eve, our credulous mother, to the tree of prohibition, root of all our woe. Now, uh, as, as we can uh, see uh, from this uh, quotation, uh, this is how the snake led, uh, argued, convinced Eve, who is the uh, credulous mother of all humanity. Now, she tastes the fruit and woe, uh, all the sin comes into the world. That is when uh, this particular line describes. Coming to the uh, sixth quotation. Here we may reign secure and in my choice to reign is worth ambition. Though in hell, better to reign in heaven than serve, sorry, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. This is uh, one of the famous quotations spoken by Satan. Satan says, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. He is ready to rule uh, hell but he is not ready to serve in heaven this is a very famous quote and it has become a sort of proverb as well so this is spoken by satan when he is hiding uh, in the form of a mist formed over the fountain of river tigris coming to the seventh quotation the wife where danger or dishonor lurks safest and seemliest by her husband stays, stays who guards her or with her the worst endures this is uh, Adam's stand uh, and also this is Milton's idea. This is why uh, you know many people criticize Milton of uh, uh, being a pa patriarch, of uh, being somebody who uh, you know underestimates women. He feels that a woman is safe only when her husband is near. So this is the idea that Adam conveys. Adam says uh, that we should not be parted, we should work together because when danger comes, if Satan comes, uh, there, there are uh, problems, there, there, might, uh, there are going to be problems. This is what Adam says to Eve and this was uh, Milton's idea that is conveyed through this quotation. Coming to eighth quotation, should God create another Eve and I another rib afford, yet loss of thee would never uh, from my heart, no, no, I feel 
the link of nature draw me flesh of flesh bone of my bone the what and from thy state mine never shall be parted bliss or woe this particular quotation refers to adam's stand adam adam uh, knows that eve has sinned she has eaten the fruit she has mm, you know uh, crossed what god has uh, said i mean uh, god has warned not to eat the fruit and they, they eat but because of uh, all these uh, adam knows that god would definitely punish eve even after that he says this is very famous flesh of flesh bone of my bone the what he loves eve so much he loves eve more than he loves god that is why he uh, cho chooses to stand by her now this is the quotation that it means coming to quotation number 9 revenge at first though sweet bitter before long back on itself recoils this is what uh, satan says when he is in the form of uh, mist he says revenge is sweet but then before long uh, back on itself recoils uh, revenge you know if if one takes revenge that comes back to comes back that is it reflects back therefore uh, you know re revenge is not a good thing this is what john milton says through satan coming to the 10th quotation all is not lost the unconquerable will and study of revenge immortal hate and the courage never to submit or yield this is again yet another very strong statements of satan now this is because of uh, such strong character that's given to satan many people have a confusion whether uh, who is the hero of uh, paradise lost is it uh, adam or is it satan this is a Uh, you know this particular question has tormented uh, uh, many critics for many generations now this particular uh, mm, all is not lost this particular quotation uh, refers to satan's uh, mind state of mind coming to the last quotation uh, for so far i have been giving you only the important quotations and among them this is the last one 11th one o fairest of creation last and best of all god's work creature in whom excelled whatever can to sight or thought be formed holy divine good amiable or sweet how art thou lost how on sudden lost defaced deflowered and now to death devote paradise lost this is uh, the commentary that uh, milton gives to the fall of man Adam and Eve have eaten uh, the fruit from a tree of knowledge and they have fallen and they have uh, you know that uh, their eyes are open they have uh, committed uh, the sin of lust and uh, that is uh, the commentary that the poet is giving to their state okay so i have uh, tried to do justice to uh, paradise lost book 9 uh you know uh, when when i was uh, teaching and when i was uh, as a student uh, i have uh, read through all the lines and uh, uh, this i personally jotted uh, from the uh, lines and i have tried to cover uh, almost all the important points in this explanation only by reading this explanation uh, you i wish you will be able to uh, answer all the mcqs that might be asked or all the uh, critical questions that might be asked thank you so much for listening